Hello my friends and welcome to JP Gaming Podcast episode number four. So for today's opening game we are doing Swickedon or Sukudan. So this game was developed and published by Konami and it was released on the PS1 in Japan on December the 15th 1995 and in Europe or in April 1997 so we got it a couple of years later. Um, the created by Yoshikita Muramara who is also developing a game called Illudian Chronicles which is a spiritual successor um, to Sukudan and it's due to release in 2022 across all platforms so Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One and Xbox Series. Um, so Sukudan is a JRPG with turn-based battle system um, but the unique thing about it is there's actually 108 playable characters and they're called the Stars of Destiny and you can recruit all of those as you're, uh, as you're going through the playthrough. Some of them require quite a specific set of tasks to be done in a special order to be able to get them. Uh, and that, I'd say you probably wouldn't get all 108 characters without a walkthrough certainly on your first playthrough you wouldn't but uh, they had a unique couple of unique mechanics so you, as you recruited you had a base which was a castle and that increased in size and you had shops and you had an armor and a blacksmith and that was really cool and then there was a couple of different uh, battle systems in it as well so as well as your traditional turn-based battle system which was actually a sixth character so that was quite cool you could do some tag team moves if you had specific characters in your party and place them in a certain formation but there was also like a war type game and it and you sort of controlled you controlled your army and you fought the other army and that wasn't turn-based that was a bit more of a strategy type kind of game but it was just a bit unique that they put that in there and of the time i don't recall any other jrpgs doing that but sakudan it's got a bit of a cult following it holds a bit of a special place in my heart it's one of my favorite all-time favorite games it's as anyone who knows me knows that final fantasy 7 takes that title but sakudan 1 and 2 are very very close uh, to the top for me if anything to be fair they're probably joined all three of those probably share the, the title of my favorite ever game it, they are just amazing so 1 and 2 was on the ps1 sakudan 3 was on the P was on the ps2 but that was only out in japan and north america so sadly we never got it here in europe now obviously there are ways to play that now um if you know where to look so i've got to admit i haven't actually played it i've touched on it but because it's so um it feels very dated now and it didn't quite capture the magic of the first two and i think a lot of people didn't seem to really hold it in such high regard as they did the first two and then uh, Sakudan 4 and 5 also come out on the PS2 and we got them here in Europe and 4 went to a I think it was a 4 a 4 man uh, battle system it might have been 3 but I think it was 4 and it was okay it wasn't quite as good as 1 and 2 but it was okay and then Sakudan 5 went back and that was kind of back to its, to the traditional formula and I really enjoyed that and that was probably my first my third favorite one in the series and then Konami just seemed to abandon it and there's been a lot of calls for for more in the series and that Konami are just not interested they seem to have no interest in making a new one which is why uh, the developer of Sukudan 1 and I believe the a guy who is involved in so the developers of Sukudan 1 and 2 and I believe some artists maybe I think it was some artists or certainly some other people who was involved in some of the later games they've all sort of grouped together they've formed their own studio received the money that they wanted and they received their money very 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 quickly they hit their target so that's coming soon can't wait to pick that up it looks so good it looks just like the first two and i just i can't wait i really can't wait for it it's one of my most anticipated games um and i actually have uh one and two on the psp they released a port for them so i'm actually thinking about going back and playing through them just because much like final fantasy 7 just going back and playing them just bring back so many memories and they're just such great games and they hold up so well they really do um 
so that's it for the opening a bit longer than usual but i'm quite passionate about sakudan i hope there's some fans of the series if you are then drop me a little message um contact jpgaming at gmail.com that's contact jpgaming at gmail.com obviously you don't have to just talk about that game you can fire over any questions they can be about video games or they can just be about anything you want really um so that's it for the little opening so what we do is as per usual we will jump into some news and then at the end I'll have a little run through of what I've been playing. There's a few games this week, there's not loads, but there's a few with a couple of notable things to talk about. And with that, we will jump straight into the news. So the first bit of news that we will talk about, which I'm sure anybody who's even remotely interested in video games has heard about over the past few days and the past week. And that is Reddit taking on Wall Street with the GameStop shares. So I won't go too much into this as I don't claim to know a huge deal about the stock market and to be honest some of it I don't particularly understand but I've got the gist of it um, and all I would say is from what we've heard over the last couple of days is the US courts have now got involved and Facebook have shut down Robinhood stock traders page for violating policies so that was a that was a page that I believe um, talked about stock and prices and uh, was also involved in in what was going on uh, so yeah I won't go too much more into that because like I say I don't claim to know a huge huge deal about it but there's plenty of information out there on the internet to to get you educated if you're not entirely sure if you wasn't aware of this news and it's something that you're interested in so go and check that out uh, I'm probably not the right person to give you some educated information so i'll leave that to the experts um so for a next bit of news we've got the so sonic the hedgehog this involves so after 10 years of providing the voice for sonic uh, roger craig smith uh, has revealed on Twitter that he'll no longer be handling the role. So no other reason was given for his departure uh, at the time of this podcast anyway. I didn't know of any. So yeah, so it looks like Sonic's going to be getting a new voice, which is going to be strange because obviously we're used to Harry Sangs. So it'd be interesting to find out some more information on that and why and whether he just fancied a new change or whether there's some more, some more underlying reasons there. I guess we'll find out in due course. Um, there has also been anyone who listened to the previous podcasts or has checked my YouTube channel knows that I'm quite excited about uh, Mario 3D World and the new expansion or new part of the game which is called Bowser's Fury so there's actually been a bit more information come out on this and this is apparently coming from sources who have played the final game and this is apparently supposed to be accurate so the notes that I have are that it takes, paid, uh, it takes place in one giant open world, uh, closer to the style of one of the kingdoms from Super Mario Odyssey, but it's actually bigger than the kingdoms in Odyssey. So that's quite encouraging that it's a nice big open world for us to run around in. Sounds good, which is kind of the gist that we all got from the trailer anyway. So I don't think that's any real surprise, but there's the confirmation there that it is only one world. Uh, it also says that there are smaller subsections in a large seamless, seamless world so it looks like there'll be separate parts in that world so I'm guessing there's going to be a water part and there's a desert part that we've all seen so that's that and then it says that you can uh, you can travel from section to section so it looks like there's going to be some sort of fast travel mechanic there so that would indicate that the world's actually quite large if you need a fast travel system that would indicate that it's quite large so that's interesting again sounds quite good because i'm hoping this is going to be nice and chunky um, it says that each section has has unlockable cat shines and you get them for completing objectives including hidden ones so again that's a bit more in the standard of your traditional mario 3d mario games there again reminiscent of sunshine um it says that you can point and click bowser jr towards power, power ups and he can unlock again we got that from the trailer um, it seemed to look like that if you was playing solo that you would control bowser jr you can point him towards the power-ups and then he will go and collect them for you. So that's good. And then the final bit of news on that is that it takes um, roughly three hours to build, but six, six hours to 100%. So I guess you're probably, if they're saying three hours to build, you may be looking at about three to four, depending on your style of play. And maybe six, 
it says six hours to complete 100 percent. so you're probably looking at anywhere from six to eight again depending on how quickly you go through and how good you are at finding secrets whether you need to use walkthroughs whether you're going to do it entirely by yourself or not so i guess a four hour campaign ain't too bad that's kind of probably wasn't expecting anything longer than that um, that's pretty good as a nice little addition and six to seven hours to complete 100 percent again that's pretty good that's a you know a seven a seven hour game isn't too bad um considering when you get some triple a games that only last sort of four to five hours uh call of duty um for their campaigns i don't think i don't think that's too bad at all considering the fact that you're also getting 3d world which which is a pretty good side scrolling mario anyway so I don't think that's too bad and it's made me look forward to it even more obviously it's coming out soon it'll be out in a few weeks it's the 12th of feb so not too long to wait now um, i'll be picking that up on release day there'll probably be a little gameplay video so uh, check check my youtube channel when that's out if you're interested in seeing, in seeing some footage and that's it for the for the mario for the mario news um and there's a bit of hitman 3 news here following on from last week uh when it was released and a little bit of conversation we had on the podcast about it so according to a games industry insider um the io have already reported that they have already turned a profit in less than a week on that game so that indicates that it's sold very well now if they can record a profit in a week that's pretty crazy so um, it's obviously not doing too bad i know there's a lot of interest in that game so that's good for them and obviously it's good that there may be some more in the offering if they're if they're doing well they're obviously gonna they're obviously look to in, uh, make a sequel i guess and follow it up and continue raking in that cash um, Monster Hunter Rise is due out shortly on the Nintendo Switch. It's due out soon. And they announced this week that there is a limited edition Switch and a limited edition Pro Controller. Now, originally we thought it was only in Japan, but we've since had confirmation it is coming to North America and Europe. And the release date there is March 26th. And I've got to say, they actually look very very nice and i'm kind of half tempted but i won't get one because there's just it is just a standard switch with a different dock but um it does look very nice and the design's very nice and the design on the pro controller is pretty cool so you can check that out i'm sure if you just if you just google that you'll be able to see the images and see what you think for yourself but i think they look i think they look very nice and it's probably my favorite design of the limited edition um, switches that they've released so we've had the diablo one we've had a Fortnite one we've had an animal crossing one but but this one looks really nice it's really cool so i'm sure they'll sell well and i'm sure that will just in king continue to increase the amount of switches that are being sold which is just crazy they they continue to be in the number one selling system month after month um they're at a record number i'm not entirely sure the number of months now but it's well over a year that they've, that they've been the biggest selling console um for the month so that's crazy and uh, it's all good because i'm a big fan of nintendo so the more money they make on that the better the better their company will do and hopefully we'll see a new improved revision of the switch soon and a little bit more power 4k would be nice so so we will see um also carrying on from last week's discussion that was quite heavily around resident evil village uh, Capcom have been taking down leaks of Resident Evil and that's not just the content from the demo there's apparently been some leaks and some footage of uh, content that wasn't in the demo and he's from the full release so Capcom have act actively been taking that down um, which I guess makes sense they don't want to spoil anything they want to release what they want to release and they don't want they don't want that being spoiled I guess they want to keep it a surprise so as many people as possible buy the game on release day and it you know doesn't turn you away from it either because you've already seen what's happening or because you see it and you're not really too keen on it so so yeah that is that and I don't really I guess I don't really blame Capcom for that they're you know they're leaks for a reason so um, in other news the PS5 exclusive Returnal so that was originally uh, due for release on March the 19th that has been delayed to April the 30th so that's a month just over a month so about five to six weeks there and that's to allow the team to provide some extra polish to the game so I can't say I'm surprised uh, I've got to say the game itself looks quite good uh, it's something that I'm quite interested in and I was keeping keeping an eye on that and I guess if they're 
you know, with what happened with Cyberpunk and other games that are, that have released and have not been finished and require multiple patches, if they if they want an extra five weeks to actually give us a finished product, then five weeks isn't long to wait at all. And I'm more than happy for developers to take these route this route now because um, I'm a little bit bored of receiving unfinished games that are just buggy and require patching, and you don't actually get what was intended to be released until maybe six seven months down the line. So I'd happily wait. Happily wait another four to five weeks and get get the product out that they want. So hopefully, hopefully this is a sign of things to come. And I know it probably will not so much delays, but more that companies are releasing games in a finished state. So hopefully this will be released finished. And I would also expect more delays to upcoming games purely because now we're probably starting to see the implications of the working from home. Um, we're a year into that almost now so I guess that's where you're going to start seeing the strain put on uh, games meeting their original release dates and not just games probably TV well we know TV and film too so so and for the last bit of news this week uh, there is news that Division 2 it's releasing a next gen update so you're due to receive a next gen update and that will be coming this coming week um, at time of this podcast and at the time of making my little notes for this podcast there wasn't a confirmed date not that I could find anyway but it is coming in this coming week and it will support 4k 60 frames per second so anybody who's a fan of the division 2 and he's still playing that and has a next gen system there you go you get that nice little update for free and I'm sure it will look I'm sure it will look lovely in 4k and at 60 frames I did play the division 2 uh, I got to the end game and then I kind of just I kind of just uh, walked away from it. The guys I was playing with, they continued for a little bit more. They got a little bit further than me, got a bit better gear than me as well. They progressed uh, quite far into the end game, but then I think as well they just kind of come off it. So for me, the whole loot shooter, the loot shooter mechanic and stuff, it doesn't. It's not really my thing. I can kind of play them, but... And then I'll kind of get a bit bored pretty quickly once the campaign stuff's kind of done. I don't really have much drive to just keep replaying um, mission after mission after mission to just get that slightly better gear. Especially with the way Division 2 done it as well. I just I wasn't a particularly big fan of it. But the game itself was okay and the, the shooting was quite nice. But yeah i sort of i've done the campaign and that was enough for me so i've actually got rid of my copy of division 2 that's now gone so um i won't be getting the next gen update but for those of you that still play it and i know it has a bit of a still has an active uh player base and an active user base so so jump in and check that out uh, what we're going to do at the end of the news is we're adding one other little bit uh, every week now so once i've come to the end of the weekly news i will be adding a little retro news section a little retro news bite so that will either be something about a retro game or a retro console that's recently just come out in the news or it will just be a bit of news on a retro game or a retro system that's that i've come across that i find particularly interesting and that i think people might want to hear so for this week's and i think this is a good one and that is uh, that a prototype of the original sonic game has been found um so a prototype cart for the original sonic game uh was discovered and i believe someone bought it in a just a lot of games that they bought and come across this unmarked cartridge and it uh, after some further research and getting involved with various groups that specialize in these kind of things we've discovered that it's a prototype for the original sonic on the mega drive or the sega genesis um so apparently there are a huge amount of differences compared to the original release and some of these include that there's a ball object in the grill green hill zone which is apparently reminiscent of indiana jones there's a ufo in marble zone there's a spring the spring yard zone is called sparkling zone and is a neon headache boulder counts the starlight zone is largely unfinished and the clockwork zone has had the w stolen um so this i'm sure again once again i got this news off of retro gamer magazine so you can check that out on their website there'll be an article there for them but also this prototype is on sale and it's been listed on ebay which is where i got these little bits these bullet points from that's from the users listing on ebay so it ends sunday uh, I'm currently recording this podcast on Saturday night 
likely to be uploaded on Sunday morning. So if you're listening to this as soon as it's uploaded, that will be tonight that the listing ends. And if you're listening to it after Sunday, then sadly you have missed out on the listing if that's something that you was interested in. But it's got a starting price of five thousand pounds, um, which is quite high. But I guess I know these things are really rare, and it's a it's a great bit of memorabilia and a great bit of history for somebody if you're if you're into that kind of stuff and you're an avid collector and you have the money to buy them. Um, it currently has no bigs, but I'm sure that that bidding will start a bit closer to the time. So I myself, I've got it on my watch list. I'm not obviously not going to bid on it, but I'm interested to see how much it goes for and how many bidders and how many bigs it receives. So uh, I'll probably report on that next week just to follow up the bit of news. But I mean, I'm sure if I had loads of money to burn, then I probably would bid on this, to be perfectly honest, because it's a cool piece of history to have and the fact that you can you know you can pop it into your mega drive and you can play it is, is really cool um so yeah i'd like to keep an eye on that and we'll see we'll see how that gets on so that's it for the news and a little retro news bite this week uh, i am looking to adding some little some little sand clips and some sound effects around lee's bits of news so maybe i'll try and get that done for next week so once again just before i get into the what have i been playing section and the final section as always, if you want to leave me a email, drop me a question, or just drop me any kind of feedback, you can either leave a dis uh, comment on the discussions part of the YouTube, or indeed on any of my videos, or you can contact me on contactjpgaming at gmail.com. That's contactjpgaming at gmail.com. As always, please hit, all, please hit all of the buttons in YouTube, so the subscribe and the like. It would mean the world to me if you haven't already subscribed to my channel. It'd be nice to build up these followers and build up these views. Uh, and obviously if you like what you hear and you like what you see then recommend to all of your gaming friends and buddies out there so the final bit of the podcast is what have i been playing so much uh, pretty much the same as last week just a bit of a continuation there's only one new game here so i mentioned i was going to be playing some more of the pathless and i did and i've actually beat that and not only have i beat the pathless i have got the platinum trophy on it um so congratulations to me there, I guess. I'm not really a trophy hunter, but I got to the end of the game, and I must say I thoroughly enjoyed that game. I really enjoyed it. It was nice. It was chilled. The puzzles were nice. They were interesting. They wasn't too difficult. Um, a lot of them follow the same pattern, but they re they did require you to think a little bit um, in how you was going to beat the puzzle, because although the mechanic was the same on some of them, the way you approached it was different. So that was really cool, and there was a lot of a lot of different puzzles there to do, be that get the light stones or get some little secrets um, to level up your eagle. So that was really cool, and like I say, once I got to the end, I beat the game. Uh, the trophy popped for beating the game, the credits rolled, and then I actually got the extended ending, which also gave me a trophy, uh, which is how I know it was an extended ending, because I thought, oh, there's another little trophy here, I clicked on it. And it said that you uh, you get that trophy for seeing the extended ending. So while I was in it, I decided to have a little look through. And I realised I only had a, a few trophies left to get. I looked through what they were and they wasn't too bad. They wasn't too grindy. Probably took maybe an hour, hour and a half to just tidy up after. Uh, so I decided to do that. And that was more because I was just having so much fun playing the game and just running around in the world. That I didn't really want to put it down when I finished. So... I decided to 100% it and I'm glad I did. Uh, the game is now 100% done so I may go back to it at some point and play through it again if it's, if I just fancy a little chilled relaxing game. But for anybody who's a fan of these little indie games if you've watched the videos any trailers there's a video on my YouTube um, then check it out because I don't think you'll be disappointed you could pick it up for around about £30 so that's not too bad it's around 8 to 10 hours I think I'm not sure how much I put in it I know I was on 8 hours uh, before I finished the game I still had a little bit to do with that so I'd say maybe maybe around 9 hours to complete the game with kind of a general kind of exploring and then maybe another 1 to 2 hours after that to finish it so you're looking at probably around around about 12 13 hours for 100 percent completion around about 10 hours to just complete the game so that's that i've also been playing a little bit of assassin's creed 2 from the Ezio collection so i don't yeah no i actually hadn't started this uh, as of last week's podcast i'm not entirely sure if i can't remember if i said i was going to start it but i've had the Ezio collection for a little while and i'm a big fan of the 
Ezio, um, the three Ezio games, the three Ezio Assassin's Creed games. Um, so I thought I'd start with number two. Now I was putting it off because I was a bit worried that my fond memories of it might be a little bit shattered by either the lack of graphics, uh, obviously because it is a PS3 game. It's quite an early PS3 game and I thought maybe it might just look a bit dated now and I thought maybe the fighting mechanics and stuff might be a bit dated and once I put the game in you get the first cutscene and with Desmond and it did yeah it did look a bit dated and I was a little bit worried that that may you know the game may not hold up but as soon as you jump into the gameplay it actually looks quite nice once you're in the gameplay um, and it just it does the game holds up and I'm having loads of fun playing it and I'll, I will be I will be completing Assassin's Creed 2 there is no doubt about that I'll be working my way through that and I do aim to do Brotherhood and Revelations as well uh, how quickly I do them or not will depend on how much time I get and what happens with work etc but I will definitely be, com be completing Assassin's Creed 2 and I will hopefully like to get into the other two at some point they may take me a while to finish I may just do a little bit here and there but yeah, that's something I want to play through. So I'm I'm loving I'm loving playing back through that again. Uh, I've also been playing some more Pikmin 3. I'm right near the end of that. I'm I believe I'm on the last quest, and I'm on my way to the final boss as such. So probably haven't got too long left on that. But again, pretty much the same as last week. Absolutely loving the game. It's got so much charm. It's an, it's a typical Nintendo title. Um, it's a little bit under the radar with Pikmin. Um, it's not as well known as, as your Donkey Kongs and your Kirby's and obviously Mario and Zelda. Um, but it is it is one of my favourite Nintendo franchises. So if you've not if you've not played any Pikmin games, then you can pick up Pikmin 3 on the Switch and you get the DLC with it. Because obviously it's a Wii U port. So you get some added little side missions and stuff. It's a really fun game. Again, it's not particularly too long. It's around, you know, I think I'm up to about, again, about eight, nine hours on it. Um, but again it's a really really fun game you can make it last a bit longer if you want to do a bit more exploring collect a bit more fruit and build up your Pikmin army a little bit more but definitely check that out if you're a fan of Nintendo and you haven't played Pikmin then please pick up Pikmin 3 because um, I myself am eager for a new entry into the series and I think the better it does the more chances we've got of that but by all accounts it's actually selling pretty well so it looks like I'm not alone in my in my love of Pikmin. So by the time next week's podcast comes around, I'll probably have that completed. And I can report on that. Uh, and the final game I've been playing this week is a game called Cyber Shadow. Now there's a video of that again on my YouTube. So that's a little 8-bit platformer in the style of an NES game. So it's a bit like Ninja Gaiden and it's a bit like Batman. Um, it's re it stays pretty true to to the kind of formula that was around at that time. So if you're a fan of old school NES platformers and you like Ninja Gaiden and you like the challenge of them, then pick up Cyber Shadow. It's available on Game Pass, um, so I'm playing it on PC, but it's also available on Nintendo Switch as well. I think it's around about £18. Um, I am four missions in, four or five missions in, and there's a boss at the end of every mission and it's pretty old school in the fact that once you suss the pattern out um once you suss the pattern of the boss then you then you can beat him and you know you know you know the pattern and you know how to beat and you can get through pretty easy but i did struggle a little bit on the last boss it was a bit more random uh in his attack pattern and it probably did require a little bit more skill but the game is, is challenging it is challenging there's also some bits in there that can make it a little bit easier uh with checkpoints you can activate little uh buffs if you like and they will work for the next section and they're generally specific to that section so if you need a shield it will probably it will give you a shield if you need an extended weapon it will give you an extended weapon etc so that game is loads of fun it's made by yacht club which do shovel knight it's loads and loads and loads of fun if you've got game pass please check it out if you've got game pass and you're a fan of old nes platformers then please check this out if you haven't got game pass but you are a fan of them and you've got switch then again check it out because it's just it is loads of fun and again that's another game that i intend to play through to completion so probably be playing some more of that in the week and we'll have a bit more to report on next week but as i say i've got the whole stage one on my youtube i didn't really want to do much more than that because i didn't want to spoil it 
for anybody so check that out if you're interested so that is it for today's podcast i think where are we we are up to 28 minutes so about about right 20 20 to 30 minutes is what i'm aiming to keep to at the minute so that will be it for today's podcast if you go ahead enjoy yourself the rest of your day have some fun play some games enjoy the rest of your week check out some content hopefully my content and check us back again next week for another podcast hopefully with some exciting news and some uh, interesting games that i've been playing so until next week have yourselves a wonderful time and this was jp gaming and we are out